Hi everyone. This tutorial is going to include quite a few little different things. I've always loved to use my serger to piece fabric, to piece quilts with, but I also like to incorporate heavier weighted decorative threads to get some beautiful different type accents. I kind of like to think out of the box when I do things. And so for this project, what we're going to start off with is using a jelly roll and doing some textured piecing. And it's kind of different when you think of textured piecing because we're so traditionally used to doing standard traditional piecing with our quilts where we put right sides together and we stitch those seams together. But for this one, we're gonna put wrong sides together. We're gonna use our serger and we're gonna go ahead and use some decorative threads. And I'll tell you all about that in a few minutes. Here's the project that we're going to create. We're also going to quilt it but we're going to quilt that. I'm going to quilt that on my sewing machine. So we'll look at that also. You'll see my way of quilting a quilt like this. You're going to notice that I've got some beautiful different colors from that jelly roll. And it just really does give you a great design with all the colors. So let me go ahead and just let's get started and let's see all the different things that you might enjoy learning from this tutorial. The project that I'm going to do is to create a sample using some uh, fabrics from a jelly roll that I have. Now I'm not using the whole jelly roll, I'm just going to use about half of it. Here I have a good bit left over. So I, what I've done is I've pulled one print, one of each print that's in the jelly roll. So in this jelly roll these prints repeat twice. Also, I'm not sure what this jelly roll is. I picked this up a long time ago, and since we're home a lot right now, I thought, let me just go ahead and pull a jelly roll out and see what I can do with it. And I love to do textured piecing on my serger. If you're in my Facebook group, a long time ago, I posted a live uh, presentation. I just went live on Facebook and I pulled out some of my samples and I showed y'all some of my samples where I've done textured piecing using my serger. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just bring you along with that process of doing textured piecing. And jelly rolls are so easy to grab and just open up and start stitching on them because they're already all cut out for you, right? And this is going to kind of be a, a smaller type quilt or I'll use it for a wall hanging or who knows what I might use it for. But what I've done is I've taken the prints from the jelly roll and what this jelly roll did was it started with kind of more of a purple colorway here and then it progressed into a green and then it came into more where you see some mauvies, mauve tones and even towards where you have kind of some mauve salmon type colors. And I'm going to keep these strips in this order. I'm going to kind of go from the purples into the greens, into where it's incorporating more pinks, and then into that salmon tone. I What I did also was um, with this jelly roll, I only have a couple of greens here, and that's because I used quite a few of the greens from this jelly roll in another project. So there's just going to be a few greens in here. Now let's talk about the threads that I've chosen. So what I did was look at my purples here and I pulled some threads out of my thread bin that I felt like would be very kind of artistically or not matchy matchy, but they'll be complementary to the fabric, the colors that are in the fabric and along with the colors that are in the thread, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to kind of make the fabrics and the threads complement each other. So this thread right here, let's talk about this one for a moment. This is a sulky 30 weight. And when we think of threads, the larger the number, the thinner the thread. And the smaller the number, the thicker the thread. So if you think of embroidery thread, which is not what we're using here, but just to give you an example, most embroidery threads are 40 weight. Those are kind of the standard in the industry with embroidery. And 40 weight is thinner than 30 weight. So that 30 is getting smaller. So this is going to be a thicker thread. 
and it's definitely going to be thicker than my standard serger threads. Standard serger threads are two ply threads. Now, what I did was, again, I just pulled this cone out because I thought it complemented the fabrics here. And then I went ahead and just pulled two other standard serger threads with some colors that are in this thread. This is a blendable thread that Sulky makes. So it's gonna give you a pretty repeat of color. And the repeats in the blendables with Sulky, they're kind of unpredictable because whenever they do these, when they make these threads, the repeats are not consistent. You're not gonna have a consistent every two inches, every three inches. They're gonna be sporadic. And it gives you a really pretty presentation with the thread here. Again, it's a blendable. We don't call the sulkies a variegated. We call it a blendable because it just blends differently and you're gonna get some really nice interest with these threads. So that's what we have here for the purples. And then for the greens, I grabbed my Maxi Lock Swirl Threads. Now this thread color is Kiwi Twist. And this, these are so fun. If you've never used any of the swirl threads that Maxi Lock makes, I warn you, they're pretty addicting. <laughs> have them in every color. And then let me just show you, I went ahead and saved the, the packaging because uh, if you'll look right on the top, it says Maxilock Swirls. They, they come in a variety of colors. Now these are all just two-ply serger threads. These threads are not going to be thicker like our 30 weight over here, but it's still gonna be fun to incorporate the different weights of thread in our project. You'll get to see some different effects that comes up with these, what happens when we use different weights of thread. So here, this for this group of our pinks and our salmons, here is a sulky 12 weight thread. Now 12 is even smaller than 30, so this thread is going to be even thicker than this thread here that we've chosen. So that's gonna have a different effect and a different look. I think you'll enjoy seeing what, what happens there when we use those different weights of threads. And then I went ahead and just chose two more spools of standard serger thread. Now, these are all just a little bit different. So again, I think it's gonna really add to the artistic flair of what we're gonna create. And sometimes maybe you don't have the exact color. It's fun to kind of mix it up a bit. And we've got all of those colors kind of happening in these fabrics. So I feel like all of the threads that I've chosen are definitely complementary to these three different colorways. So let's go ahead and um, talk a little bit about the stitch that we're going to use. You notice I have three in this colorway, three in this colorway, and three in this colorway. That's because we're going to do a three thread wide stitch in our piecing. And what I'll do is use the overlock one needle in my serger, but I won't use the overlock two needle and then I'm gonna be threading my upper looper and my lower looper. Now with the 12 weight decorative thread here that I have in these tones and the 30 weight that I have over here with these tones, this thread is gonna be threaded in my upper looper and this one will also whenever I'm threading up for those piecing for this colorway. Now what we'll do is thread up for this group this one in the upper looper, and this one will go in the lower looper, and this one will go in the needle. Now this one, again, these are all the same, so you're gonna have overlock one needle, upper looper, and lower looper. For this one, I'm gonna do the upper looper with this heavier weighted thread here, and then I'll just grab one of these, I'm not even sure which one. I might go ahead and use this little bit deeper one in the lower looper, and then this one in my needle. Now the way it's pressed, Really what's in your lower looper is going to be pressed against the fabric so you won't really see it a whole lot once your project is finished. So that's kind of my thought process of how I'm going to thread my machine with these different threads. And again, when we're piecing the purple, these threads are the threads that are gonna be used when I'm piecing the green. These are the threads that I'm going to use. And when I'm piecing the pinks and the mauves, these are the threads that I'm gonna use. Now I'm gonna be stitching on my Baby Lock Triumph. If you have a serger that you can do a three thread wide overlock stitch, 
And if you don't have the machine that I have, just look at your manufacturer instructions and see if that's something that you can do with your machine. Now, I most recently finished up uh, a course on Udemy and I'm created, I created that course using my Baby Lock Triumph. But that course would be really beneficial to you even if you would have an ovation or maybe an accolade or, or an evolution. A lot of the things that I'm going to do in that course would be really sim similar to what you can do on those, also on those machines. And I'm going to be using different feet and accessories. And in that course, it's really detailed from start to finish in threading up and changing from stitch to stitch. If that's something you're interested in, I'll go ahead and link that down in the description. Maybe it might help you. I, if you like learning from me, it might be something that you're looking for. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my machine threaded up and ready to start piecing our textured piecing. So I threaded up my machine with the purple threads and I did a little test. I always like to test. Um, there's people that test and there's those that wish they did, right? So I went ahead and did a little test to see where I might want my stitch length. And I decided that I wanted it on a standard one and a half. So here's my little notch here, here's my one, here's my two. So I'm halfway between one and a half in the standard setting. And I went ahead and set my width to 7.0. And one of the things, my stitch selector is set to A because I'm using that left needle. I'm gonna grab my first two jelly roll strips and I'm just, just grabbing. If you have a, a strip that's a little darker and then a little lighter, you might wanna just pair the dark one next to the light one. So I'm gonna start with these two. Now when we do texture piecing, oh goodness, this is what'll throw us for a loop. Instead of putting right sides together, we're going to put the wrong sides of the fabric together, okay? And that's gonna allow that stitching to, to rest upon the right side of the fabric once we open it up. So here we go, I've got two of my Jelly Roll strips, the wrong side to the wrong side. I'm just gonna kinda line them up. And what I wanna do is allow the edge of the fabric to just skim my knife. So I would recommend that you just visually have a place that you wanna guide, guide by. I'm not gonna put the fabric all the way to the right because the jelly strips are going to um, lose fabric on each side if I do that. So I'm gonna be trimming a little more than I want to. Now, as I was looking at my finished seaming, even though it is so pretty, I'm noticing here the little pointed edges of the jelly roll, and that doesn't make me too happy. So what I'm gonna do on my next strip is I'm gonna scoop my fabric further over. I really do love the way this thread is looking on the fabric. I didn't realize it, but there is like a little slight color, a little U of those little grays, and that's in that sulky thread also. So I, I am loving that thread. Notice that I didn't place the stitch really, really close together because I want some of that fabric to just peek through the threads. Now that's definitely a preference. So whatever makes you happy, you can do a tighter stitch. But another thing that you're gonna notice here is that it's kind of like a satin stitch if you think about it. Here's that overlock needle one and here all the way across we don't have we don't have another needle in so we're not going to have that stitch come along here which to me is a really pretty effect when i do textured piecing so next i'm going to take this to my iron i'm going to go ahead and open it up for you here but i'm going to take it to my ironing board so you'll notice see the bottom that's the bottom stitch that's the bottom of the stitch and that's where you're seeing that darker thread and then I'm gonna press that seam flat, okay? So every time I do a row, every time I do, I serge two strips together, I'm gonna run over to my, to my ironing board and I'm gonna just give it a good press to where it flattens and the decorative thread is sitting on the top of the fabric. Okay, so I've pressed it, given the um, fabric, the little seam, a little bit of memory. But as we continue with our project with our piecing, once we finish, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna quilt this too. So let's just go ahead and get them all pieced together and then we'll do our next step of putting it all together. Let's just enjoy that textured piecing process right now. So now 
that I have my light strip and my dark strip, I'm going to go ahead. I need to decide, hmm, which way, um, which way, where do I want to put the next strip? And in my mind, I have, this is kind of a darker one. So I want to go ahead and put it next to the lighter strip. And we're going to put it wrong sides together. Now in this quilt, if I wanted the next strip to be able to be, pre my textured piecing to be able to be pressed in the same direction, I would always need this yellow strip to be that left edge of my quilt top, okay? But to me, it really doesn't matter, all right? Because I think it's even more interesting if I press the next one in this direction. So you can either be consistent, and then doing that, you would start from your left and go all the way to your right with your piecing. So this would be number one, and it would always be number one, and you would continue forward like number two and number three. But again, I don't really care. What bothers me at this point, what makes me happy is I don't really want to put this dark one right next to this one. I want this one to go over here next to the yellow one. So I'm going to go ahead and I will flip the piece around. And now when I start piecing and I open it up, I'm going to have this medium tone strip next to that lighter yellowy tone strip. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna put it wrong sides together once again. And remember we talked about, I wanted to scoot this over a little bit more. I'm gonna change my mind. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and line up those little points just to the right of my plate. I will kind of like to share with y'all those little things I learn along the way or what I might creatively want to change because you know what the same things may happen to you and it's just a better learning experience I think it's good to I like to see when people kind of make adjustments and I place that right edge right to the edge of the plate so now you'll see that I'm trimming off those little pointed edges and so whenever I look at my stitch I'm going to have a nice flush edge on the right of all that pretty thread. Just make sure as you surge you keep that bottom layer flush with that, you know, right side of the right edge of those two layers together. Because the one thing that would be a mess up would be if you allowed that bottom piece to slip away and you weren't stitching on both layers. I've done it before. Okay, it's time to press. So I'm going to go press, but look how neat that's going to look. I think that's going to look really fun with these two seams facing opposite directions there. Look how pretty that pressed. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just continue adding. And as I add, I'm gonna just try to grab my strips where I kind of have either the medium or the darker next to a light and then just continue forward. Now, if it gets to the point where I can't do that, well, I'm just gonna have to accept it. But in my head, that's what I'm gonna try to do is go from either medium to light or dark to light to try not to throw the lights and the darks right beside each other if I can help it. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so look what we have so far. I am really, really loving this. Okay, I am a purple fan. I just am. Not everybody is. But I love the way this is looking. If I had enough of these purple tones, I would do the whole thing just in the purples. But I just I just love it. I love the way the thread is blending and complementing complementing the fabrics. I think it was a really good choice. And again, like I said earlier, I didn't realize 
but that my little circles had a hint of gray in them. But if I would looked a little closer or paid attention, these even have a hint of gray in it. So this is looking really pretty. I like it. So in the beginning when we started, remember when I, if you'll notice here on this seam and this seam here, I pressed those flat. I started with these two together. And when I surged these two together, um, if you'll notice, whatever, wherever your decorative thread is, okay, so here's my decorative thread. It's on top of that yellow based fabric. That means when I surged this, this was this fabric was on the top. I was looking at this fabric when I put these two together right here on this seam. And then whenever I knew that, so this was this was my first two pieces, and then I grabbed this one. And when I laid this one over to this side on the other side of this one, I thought, oh, it's just not enough contrast. So I wanted to put that on the opposite side of the lighter one. But I didn't, I didn't want to, um, what was I thinking? I just wanted, I, I flipped it around and mixed it up to where when I put this one next to this one, wrong sides together, I was looking at the yellow fabric, once again, it was on top. So when you're surging, whatever fabric that is on the top and you take it out of your serger, then that is going to be where the decorative thread is sitting upon. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you right now, continue to watch me piece things together and you'll notice. Whenever I'm piecing the fabric that's on the top, because my decorative thread is in my upper looper for two of my colorways. So that means that that upper looper thread is going to sit on the top of the fabric, the one that's right side up, the one that I'm looking at. You'll see that as we continue forward. Okay, I'm loving this. I really love this polka dot fabric. I love polka dots. Okay, so the next one is going to be our green. So I'm going to unthread my machine with all of my purple threads and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to thread up with my green threads. Okay, so I threaded up my serger with my green threads and I thought, well, let me just do a little test again. I love to test and I wanted to compare what my green thread looked like as, you know, up next to this purple decorative thread because remember this one's thicker and looking at the spacing of the thread I, I'm fine with it so I'm going to leave my stitch length exactly where I had set it for this thread I like the way that looks it's still a little spacious I think it looks just fine I'm happy with that so I'm going to leave all my setting of my serger the same I'm not going to I'm not going to turn I'm not going to change that in any way all right, so let's look at our fabrics once again. So here's my two green. I only have two green strips. I might have to go rummage through um, my, my jelly roll and see if I have another green one hiding in there because I think I want just one more that might be a little darker. Both of these kind of read light for me, you know, in my opinion. So if you'll look here, this strip is pretty light. So if I look over here, over here on the edge, this one's quite dark. So what I'm going to do when I start surging, I'm going to surge this one or this one. I think I'm going to do this one, okay? Because I don't think this print repeats over here. I could be wrong, but I don't think it's in my pink fabrics. So I'm going to go ahead and put the floral print because I know that's in the pink prints first so I'm going to do that let me grab go look real quick and see if I might have one more green strip hiding somewhere I do okay I also have that polka dot I love that polka dot so I'm going to throw that one in there and I also have this one okay so I'm gonna pull that one too and then we'll have our green little geometric type print kind of a looks kind of like an Aztec print okay so it was the really dark green ones that I used 
for another project, but I'm gonna go ahead and use these also. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set these aside. So what I'll probably do is this one, um, then I'm gonna do this one, because it really kind of looks quite different. And then I'm gonna do, let's see, I may change my mind. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the polka dot, and then I'm gonna do this one. Okay, so that's gonna be my order. So we'll just leave these stacked here. Boom, boom, boom. That way I can just pull from the top each time. Now, the way I was talking about earlier about where the decorative thread in the upper looper is gonna lay when we're stitching. So if I go to my serger and I place my green one underneath my purple one, wrong sides together, and I'm looking at that purple thread, what's gonna happen is that green is gonna be sitting on top of the purple. But I really don't want that to happen. So what I'll do is just take and flip it over. Oh my goodness, can y'all hear the rain? I actually think I've got some hail hitting the window. I'm in Colorado with my daughter at her house and they get a lot of hail over here. I'm not used to that in Southwest Louisiana. Okay, just a little, I, I, just a little tidbit there. Okay, all right, so now I've got the green on the top and when I start surging, that green in my upper looper is gonna sit on top of that green reading fabric and that's what I want. So when I press this one, I'll press it towards the purple and that thread's gonna show, that green is gonna show on the top. That'll be my focal point. All right, so let's go back to the serger and get that going. love it. I really like that. How about y'all? Now if you'll notice, here's my green. It's going to be pressed towards the purple because I want that to show. I don't want to flip it over to where the purple shows because that's not really going to make that green thread shine. So I want to press it to where my green's laying on top of that fabric that I'm kind of calling my green family. Now this is how, when I finish the next one, here I've got my next strip underneath, wrong sides together. So for this one, what I'm gonna do for this seam, I'm gonna have this one pressed this way and this one pressed the opposite direction. And that's going to kind of create the same type of seam that happened over here with our yellows. And I like that because I'm gonna repeat here what I did you know, a few steps back. And that way it'll just kind of uh, give it a little continuity. Even though most of the seams are gonna kind of go in the same direction, every once in a while I like it if I'm gonna have two of those seams, they're gonna go in one direction and on the same print go in the opposite direction. Okay, look how it looks with the green. I'm absolutely loving this. Look how pretty. I always find that when I start creating things, I love the step when I can step back and just look at it. And I always like to pet my fabric too. But look how, oh, I just like, look how fun it looks. Look how it coordinates. I'm really am loving this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and thread up my mauve threads now, and then I'm gonna continue forward to the right of those greens to get all of my other pretty pinky, mauve -y, kind of salmon-y prints texture surged together. I hope y'all are having fun too. All 
right, so I'm threaded up and I'm ready to start with my mauve tones. Now, remember what I said, because I want that you that mauve tone of threads to stitch on top of the fabrics that are reading those colors, I want that fabric to be right side up. So my green's gonna be on the bottom and those uh, different fabrics that we're switching to are gonna rest on the top. Okay, ready to go. And you know what, just kind of a, a note of caution. Anytime you're serging, especially now that we have all this lovely fabric over here that we're uh, playing with, it's always really important for you to make sure you don't get any of your extra fabric coming up underneath here. Oh, we would just cry if that would happen at this point, right? So always when you're, you're using your serger, because we've got that blade that's cutting and cleaning it up for us, always just take a little look every once in a while and make sure your fabric, any of your extra fabric over here is not folding up underneath there. That's just always a really best practice. how pretty okay so that mauve is <laughs> oh my goodness it's just truly a um a step-by-step -step process when we're going from color to color and i really am liking the migration of the different colors from top to bottom i love that you know even this fabric here it, it reads a little heavier on maybe kind of some of those darker kind of some blues that are in some of these jelly rolls here but the mauve is just in the little lines and that really complements those two. Now, another thing that I'll mention here is, so, is that we were using, this is the 12 weight. So the 12 weight is even heavier than the 30 weight or just the two ply serger thread. So you're gonna notice a little bit more of closeness in those stitches. That concentration is a little bit thicker. But I still, I still really like the way it looks. I didn't change the length on this one either. I'm just going to leave it the same. All right, now I'm going to add all the rest of my strips. I went ahead and went through the rest of my strips, and I arranged them from dark to light, dark light, dark light, until I ran out of these strips. So note to self when you're doing this, take the time to just go ahead and arrange all of your jelly rolls exactly how you want them. I was just kind of, when I got started, I just kind of laid them out there and I, I was still in the planning process where the fabric uh, was concerned. So something that I've learned from, from this process is to go ahead and lay them out the way you want them. And I really liked it from dark to light to dark to light as I go through the jelly roll strips. Okay, so I've grabbed my next piece of fabric and to create the pressing to where this one's gonna go this way and this one's gonna go this way. I'm gonna stitch one more time looking at this same strip that I stitched looking at the last time. And that's gonna allow these two strips to be pressed this way and this way. And it's gonna create that same kind of pressing pattern that I did in the two previous color schemes. Okay, so here was our bottom strip. That was our last strip. Now we're gonna grab a new strip. We're gonna place it underneath it, wrong sides together. And we'll can just, again, we'll just continue this process till we're finished. Just kinda want you to understand how I'm adding the strips, how I'm gonna add the rest of the strips so when I'm able to press, all those seams will just go down from now on. Don't y'all just love it when I repeat myself? <laughs> Repetition builds long-term memory.
So all of our strips are pieced together. What do you think? I really like it. I really like just the migration from one color to the next color to the next color. And using those decorative threads to sit on top of the fabric on the right side of the fabric is definitely an artistic little accent. So let me mention, so over here where the yellow is, see how I have those two seams? Those are pressed flat and away from each, from each other. And that really happened in the beginning because I really didn't think out which, which strip I wanted to start with first, okay? So once I got these two together, then I started adding to them over to the left. But then I realized it gave me a different little accent in the quilt itself. So here, those seams are pressed away from each other. And then as I come down, these are gonna be pressed down. And then here I hit another strip to where I've done the same process. So I've taken the seams on this strip and I've pressed one to the right and one to the left, just like we did over here. And then I continue to press these down. And here I have the mauve one that I've pressed this seam up and this seam down. So we've really repeated that little technique three times in the quilt. So if any of your friends start looking a little closer, you can say, oh yeah, I did that on purpose. And you did because it really does give it a little bit of a difference. And then the rest of these seams, I just press them all the way down. Okay, so I really do like this composition, if we might want to say, but I'm not going to leave you here. I'm going to take you on my journey, on my process journey of how I'm going to put it all together. So let's go ahead and get some batting and some backing and start quilting this. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to have my Facebook group, my Instagram, and my YouTube channel noted here at the end. So definitely pop over there, like, join, subscribe, and hopefully I will see you next time on the next tutorial.